Rolex flipping is dead. It's over. You'll probably come across some talk on various watch channels discussing the plunge in used Rolex prices. They've even hinted at the end of flipping, but they've not really hit on the exact reason why. Why is it over? The real reason behind this shift is still unsaid. And that's exactly what we're discussing today. As an economist, I'm going to explain exactly why it's dead. So let's dive right in. In this video, we're covering three main points. To begin with, we'll rewind to how the Rolex flipping even became a phenomenon. It's been a curious market where a used watch could command a higher price than a new one. Understanding this weird state of affairs is our first port of call. Next, we'll shift gears to the current market transformations that signal the end of the flipping era. All right. And finally, we'll cast our gaze into the future and analyze what the notion of flipping can make a comeback, perhaps under a different guise as, quote, luxury watch trading, or had the flippers worn down their operations for good. If you find yourself fascinated by my market analysis, do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more watch market insight to share with you in the near future. But first, some housekeeping stuff. I'm an ambassador for Watch Crunch, the ultimate rendezvous for watch lovers like us. We're currently hosting a raging discussion about those under the radar brands delivering extraordinary value. The competition is fierce with Christopher Ward in the lead, but your comments could tip the scales. Join the fun by following the link in the comments. Secondly, I, I know I've promised a bunch of watch reviews on this channel and they are definitely coming. My goal is to provide reviews that not only detail the watch's specifications, but also talk about the feeling of wearing them on a daily basis. I really want to go beyond the usual spec sheet reading so I'm still working on the format and I do appreciate your patience. Now, let's ravel the Rolex mystery. Oh, by the way, quick wrist check. I'm wearing my Steinhardt Vintage GMT. Talk about Rolex and Rolex homages. So yeah, getting back to the, the whole Rolex flipping. As we know, the pandemic had a significant impact on watch prices, triggering an unprecedented surge. With everyone stuck at home and unable to participate in the usual retail therapy, online shopping became the obsession. The shift was sudden and extreme as people, you know, desperate for a touch of luxury and normalcy, is that a word, normalcy? Yeah. Turned to e-commerce, spending like drunken sailors on shore leave. So what was the result? An explosion in demand particularly for luxury items like Rolex watches. You know what happened. In addition to that, there were production constraints like Rolex having to pause operations for a few months due to safety protocols. That only added fuel to the fire. While these aspects played a part, they were just the tip of the iceberg. There's more to it. Beneath the surface, other dynamics were at play. There's FOMO, fear of missing out, which surely contributed, but as an economist, I see the real driver as being something more fundamental in nature. Low interest rates. A topic we've covered in the past update definitely played a major role. Central banks across the globe lowered rates to prevent a global recession, and it was necessary. But what followed was a ripple effect across all markets, including luxury watches. Ain't we got fun? Now, fast forward to today, and what's happening? Interest rates are being adjusted upwards to counteract skyrocketing inflation. We've recently made some progress, but there's still much more work to do. And this also affected the prices of luxury watches. What goes up must come down. This is only a matter of time, and it's happening today. But there's another piece to this flipping puzzle and that's the economic principle of 
price arbitrage. Remember that term. That's really key to explain what's happening. What's happened before, what's happening now. This economic concept refers to the practice of taking advantage of price discrepancies, buying a product at a lower price in one market and selling it at a higher price in another. Ideally, this could in fact result in a risk-free profit. Now, does this sound familiar? Yeah. Despite being distinct markets, Rolex retail and secondary markets deal with identical products, obviously Rolex watches, which presented a golden opportunity for arbitrage during the pandemic. The prospect of risk-free transactions led to a boom in wait lists as Rolex watches became an attractive investment with the promise of higher resale values, something that we rarely see in used goods. Let me illustrate this with a Rolex scenario. Suppose you bought a Rolex watch from an authorized dealer at the retail price, right? And then sold it in the secondary market where demand far exceeds supply. The price difference would be your profit. And as long as the demand remains high in the secondary market, this transaction is essentially risk-free. And that's the key. That's the key. It costs nothing to get on the list. And if you get the watch, free money without any risk at all. This calculation was what drove people crazy and jumped up the wait list. It was crazy, yeah. However, the narrative shifts when Rolex prices begin to dip. Suddenly, the risk-free nature of the transaction is threatened, leading to potential losses. You could actually lose money on these deals. This new reality has caused even avid collectors to put their purchases on hold. So, quick story. During a recent trip to a Vegas Rolex authorized dealer, I was astounded to find a Datejust models readily available for purchase right there. I mean, you could buy them and walk out with a watch. When was the last time we saw that? While models like the Cosmograph Daytona, yay, awesome, and the, of course, the, the John Mayer green dial continue to demand a premium, the overall trend for Rolex prices is undeniably downward. The real concern is that the full impact of the recession hasn't even hit yet. Rolex prices are dropping fast, even without a full-scale economic downturn. That's the thing. When that recession does hit, it could potentially lead to an even steeper fall in prices, a prospect that is likely to keep flippers out of the business for quite some time. Okay, well, I think that's enough for today. I hope you found that useful or at least interesting. And I'll see you in the next one.